I want to start today by talking about diversity. In the natural world, it's been the key to the survival of ecosystems. It has enabled species to thrive under different conditions and build a resilience to adapt to a constantly changing world. Now, let's think about humanity for a second. We are actually incredibly diverse, but unfortunately, we've often forgotten to honor that diversity. Somewhere along the way of designing our modern world, we forgot how important it was to consider the needs of all. Take us women, for example. For centuries, we have been limited to the private realm of life. It has therefore been men who have led in business and politics and determined most of the norms and rules that shape our societies today. And the world of technological innovation has not been any different. Although in the 1960s and 70s, some of the first pioneers in the field of computing were women, in the 1980s, as technology started becoming more important for business, women were pushed out of the equation. Maybe not literally, but as this advertisement from the Times shows, it was a subtle process that ensured we felt this was not our space. And although, unfortunately, women have been left out of much more than just technology, the issue is that tech is not just any other sector. It is the field that will define our future. It is already changing how we communicate, how we live, how we work, and it will continue transforming every aspect of human life on Earth. And although it has been a challenge, it has been difficult for women to get into the space, we have seen many examples of everything that can go wrong when we're not there. Women, minorities, are not part of building technology. We have seen health applications that measure infinite indicators, but forget what half of the world's population lives for most of their lives, the menstrual cycle. We have seen seat belts better fit for male bodies rather than female ones. Artificial intelligence that's way better at detecting white faces over black ones. And the most horrible and sexist bots out there. And it is time to change. Today, I want to share more about my own encounter with the world of technology. I, as most women out there, did not major in computer science. Luckily, though, I did meet a software developer one night in Washington, D.C., and conveniently fell in love with him. His name is Herman, up there with the glasses. He was passionate, and he really wanted to start a business of his own. And I really wanted to move back to my home country, Peru. So I saw this as, this as an opportunity to convince him to come with me to Lima and start a company. And in 2013, we landed in Lima, ready to start our own business. As those of you entrepreneurs out there probably know, this is way easier said than done. We literally had no clue of how to get started. But conveniently, the tech sector was growing, and Herman's coding skills proved to be quite handy. So together with Rodolfo, also up there, and a great friend of us, we ended up started a software development company named Ayu. To our surprise, we actually started doing pretty well. And in a few months, we had more clients that we could handle. But of course, problems did not take long to arrive. The first one was building our own team of software developers. We realized it was actually pretty hard. There were apparently only a handful of qualified software developers in Lima, and every company out there wanted them. So it was difficult. It took a lot of time. But we finally got there, and we built our first team. We were happy, we were excited, but soon after, the second problem came. Where are all the women? As you can see, they were not there working with us. And believe me, I tried. As an outsider to the sector, I was really surprised to see that women developers are such a rare breed. So I went out and decided to explore all those communities where the world of software lives and thrives. And time after time, I found something like this. You can see, great group of guys, amazing developers, but not particularly diverse. 
And at this point, I became obsessed with trying to understand why. I read, I researched, I reflected on my own experience, only to confirm that it's not that us women don't like tech, or that we're not good at math, or that we're just not good enough building software. Far from it. We're actually pretty awesome. The issue is that this field has been filled with stereotypes, stereotypes that have made it very difficult for us to feel reflected in communities that look like this. And as they rightly say, you cannot be what you cannot see. So at this point, I realized it made absolutely no sense for half of the world's population to be missing out in a field of amazing opportunities, great jobs, very well paid, where you get to design the technologies that define our lives and future. I decided I had to do something about it. This field has something that's very, very unique. It's probably one of the only spaces that understand that skills are more important than degrees. And I realized that the world of software is a world of passionate self-learners, where a university degree is not the only path for success. Can you think about a field with more potential for inclusion? I couldn't, so I decided I had to do something to turn this world that I had discovered by random chances of lives into an opportunity for more women. So kind of magically, Laboratoria was born. We decided to completely pivot our entrepreneurial journey and go from selling websites to big companies to build an organization that would go out and find talented women looking for better opportunities in life and work. We designed this crazy, intense program where students across six months get not only to learn coding and JavaScript, they actually learn to work together, to trust each other, and to believe in themselves. And by the end, they've become the most amazing developers and designers out there. And we were so amazed by their talents and strengths that we decided to go out and show companies, big and small, that this is the talent they had been waiting for. These are the developers that you need to build better teams and better products. And I really don't know how, but I think that without realizing what we were doing, we started a movement that would forever change the face of the tech sector in Latin America a movement of companies that are willing to go the extra mile to recruit diverse talent and to build inclusive teams where everyone gets the opportunity to thrive. And a movement that has inspired thousands of women to believe they can become technology creators too and actually go out there and make it happen. It's been four years since we started this and we've gone from a small pilot program in Lima to five training centers across Peru, Chile, Mexico, and Brazil. Over a thousand amazing women have gone through Laboratoria. They are now out there working in leading companies in our region, changing how those teams look, work, and build software. Amazing women like Angie, user experience designer in Lima, who now works for one of the biggest software factories in the world. And in her own worlds, never in her wildest dreams imagined she could feel so happy working. She spent her days designing digital products for some of the leading banks in Peru, improving the experience they provide to millions of users daily. And what she feels more proud of, the fact that she's been able to prove to her family and to society that she can be a single mother and economically independent. And students as Tamara in Chile, who on her first job as a developer joined a team of 25 guys. You would imagine it, it, she was the one who would have needed some coaching and support to adapt to, to this new phase. But it was actually one of the guys in her team that reached out to the company psychologist because he needed some assistance uh, in how to deal with the women sitting next to him. <laughs> so it wasn't easy. It was very hard, but she stayed and persevered. And a few months into her job, she was giving talks on gender equity in the company. Today, she spends her days, her free time, mentoring young girls and women so that 
they know that the world of tech is out there for them to conquer, even though it doesn't always look that way from the outside. And women as, as Amalia in Mexico, who after majoring in arts and theater, struggled to make a living and to become economically independent, so she decided to give tech a chance. She now works at the leading development bank in the region, based out of Washington, D.C. And although she sometimes struggles when people undervalue her skills because she doesn't have that formal degree in the subject, she's convinced women like her are here to stay in tech and actually have the potential to make the sector much better. As she told me a few weeks ago when I was speaking with her, I might not have the degree, but you know what? I'm an incredible self-learner. I'm the best team player, and I am sure my humanities background is helping me make tech a better world for all. So with a thousand women like this, you can imagine that the face of tech in the region is rapidly changing. Only a few weeks ago, I went to a Laboratoria Tech Meetup in Lima, and it now looks more like this. As you can see, there's women everywhere. <laughs> Thank you. Even, even my two-year-old daughter is there. You'll see her in the middle. <laughs> Women that are now working in the leading companies, startups, and even governments in our countries. Women that are working in designing and building the solutions that will define how we shop, how we learn, how we buy, how we bank and women that are making sure our perspective is never again left behind. A world where women are part of designing and building technology is a world where women are part of shaping our future. And I have no doubt in mind that that will be a better world for all. Thank you. <laughs>